I'm Agree. I'm Harrison. And this is Bottom Line Design. This is a special episode, though. Uh, we haven't done this type in a while, um, maybe like since the very beginning, really. Yeah. Um, and even this one's a kind of a different format. It's like, it's just the two of us, um, but it's going to be me getting your story out of you. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah. I know nothing about this interview, by the way. Okay. Or chat or whatever it is. Whatever no it is, right? Yeah. Well, uh, I want I want just like on the record, like uh, the account of how Harrison became Harrison uh, as a designer, hmm. you know, um, and maybe we can just start from the beginning, like you as a kid, what was what was that like? Yeah. OK. As a kid, grew up in Manhattan. Um, my dad was an architect. Uh, my mom was. Uh, she studied art history, but went into major gifts fundraising. Mm. Um, so that merging of two worlds, one from the fundraising side was like just how to engage with people, read people, all that fun stuff. And then on my dad's side, it's just pure design, like looking out for people's needs and like trying to address those needs through, you know, good architectural design. But like as a kid, you weren't like aware right of like those aspects of their job i imagine right like and i say this just yeah. to ask like what you as a kid i was you, i was always you spending my, your time yeah. doing like what was your play time you know outside of the playground or the sandbox like you know funny enough it was i was always drawing <laughs> me too <laughs> i was always drawing and uh i was always visiting my uh my dad's uh construction site do you remember the first drawing that you did that was a good question no okay i I, I remember yeah. the first drawing i did yeah it was a i remember making a poseidon fork <laughs> oh okay like almost like yeah. a little pitchfork yeah. where i was like i did the yeah. u and then the <laughs> stick and i was like Oh yeah, that looks like the thing. And then I added the little <laughs> triangles on top, yeah. and I stepped back and was like, oh, "That okay. looks the way I intended it to look." Yeah, nice. <laughs> I remember um, also like in a in the crib. I have this bear. This was probably my first core memory. Okay, is uh, I like never cried as a kid, and whenever my parents would like come in and check on me, I'd always just be like staring out the window, mm. looking at traffic. Yeah. And uh probably explains my love for uh like strategy games and like yeah, yeah. or like city skylines. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I really liked the order. Yeah. And like the systemization totally of, of, of traffic. But uh a lot of my childhood was really just like going uh, I spent a lot of time with my parents at their jobs hmm. specifically. And um just throw on do not disturb. And I also remember a lot of the time just going to museums like all the time. I think it was every single Friday, my mom would pick up uh, my sister and I to go to a new museum all the time. And like New York's not sh like shy of, you know, museums. There's plenty to go to. Yeah. I remember um, this was also a detail in Jean-Michel Basquiat's story that he went to the Met a lot as a kid, yeah. I, think. I think it was either the Met or um, the museum. Brooklyn Museum, oh, maybe. Because yeah. he was in like Park Slope, right? Both great. Um, yeah, both great. And just grew up around world-class art, you know? Yeah. And so, okay, so you were going to museums a lot as a kid. You were drawing a lot as a kid. Uh, when did that start to go from uh, a big hobby of yours to kind of like shaping into like the defining aspect of where I remember was going. Yeah. When observation became practice was when I was in fourth grade. Uh, we had moved to Wilton, Connecticut. And um, I remember going into an art class at school. And I remember like copying a Van Gogh. And do you the remember teacher, which one? It was the self portrait, the famous self portrait. Oh, okay. Do yeah. you remember which of the self portraits? Oh, yeah, because he had tons. Um, <laughs> no, I don't. It was one of them. It was one. Of, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. It, it was like when you. Yeah, it was. I, mean, I guess they're all famous. Right, <laughs> right. But no, yeah, Van Gogh portraiture is like it's it's good stuff yeah. for, for copy work, especially like 
but yeah. like I, I copied it um, and didn't even follow the assignment, let alone like ADD as a kid. It's just like you definitely did not pay attention to anything. Yeah. Right? So I was just like doing my own thing. And then um, a teacher comes over and she's like, wow, like this is so impressive yada yada calls my parents is like this is so impressive like you probably should enroll him into some other stuff so i got enrolled into this um uh it was almost like the juilliard of like young young kids that are artists or like emergent artists or however emergent you can be as yeah a, yeah yeah you know as an actual toddler but um that was when i they introduced <laughs> so actually like questionable now that i'm thinking about it uh my first class was uh like a like a, a nude figure drawing class <laughs> <laughs> and i remember uh when she like derobed all the kids were like whoa whoa like hey whoa and i was just i just started drawing you know i just i started drawing and um that was that but actually there was this uh story that comes to mind before that one and <laughs> I was in art class still in Manhattan and I was maybe like first grade mm. and uh, I drew a lion. I drew a lion and uh, fun fact, I'm a Leo, August baby. Um, and I had to staple, <laughs> I had to, I, I was the first one to be done and the te and I raised my hand and the teacher from across the room says, Harrison, you're not done. Give it some more time and this was like uh the assignment was to draw a lion yeah okay yeah or no just draw your favorite animal draw your favorite yeah animal. okay and so i drew a lion and uh the teacher is like no that's not true like you're, you're not done spend some more time on it and so like i looked at it and i'm like this is all i want to do yeah <laughs> and so uh i raised my hand again he's like okay well if you're really done like please staple you know your name we had a name tag that like we made and we stapled it and I didn't have a hard surface. My dumbass used my hand as the hard surface and a stapler for the very first time. And I clicked into it and I'm like, I'm like, this is great. I'm like holding up my hand. I'm like, what's that red stuff kind of oh, coming no. through the page? Okay. And the pain didn't even register. Oh my you god. Know? It's like, wow. you know, I just don't remember like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, a pregnancy. Like it's just right. like your body's like in shock. So uh <laughs> I kids are so weird i was so weird i like rolled it up in my hand and i went over to the teacher i'm like may i go to the bathroom oh my god <laughs> and, oh my god and literally go to the bathroom and i pick the staple out and i'm like okay so that's what that device does yeah wow okay okay <laughs> i i have actually i have a drawing memory from second grade yeah that uh i i also but it wasn't it wasn't in art class it was mm. like it was reading class and we had a worksheet that we had to fill out or mm -hmm. something and i um completed it and uh i had leftover time so i started doodling in the margins yeah and i um no wait this was a yeah the teacher was like this is too much doodling and like gave me a 99 out of 100 and like knocked a point off for like giving the entire sheet a full sleeve tap basically unbelievable but it's no it's okay yeah. we loved her but like she was just like yeah you gotta just for yeah, the push right but she there was another one where our, the assignment was to draw a tiger yeah and like uh I drew a tiger where um, everyone else's tigers, she said, like had just like the linear stripes. Yeah. Or it's like, Shh. but yours was contoured. To yeah, the body. yeah, my, yeah, yeah. It was contoured to the body. Yeah. Not that it was like a very good body or whatever, but like yeah. I was trying to get that little like yeah. that, that attention to Death. detail, right? Yeah. And the parent teacher conference, she was like, yeah, like you know, he he seems to be really into drawing or whatever. So I was I, I was in a similar place, but like I don't think that there was quite as much. Uh, juilliard scale opportunity for like that kind of enrichment in salt lake city utah yeah you know? <laughs> yeah uh, where, where i was having my formative childhood years okay so so like what okay so this is now you're like as a kid it's very clear you're into drawing what is that transitionary period like like in middle school going into high school you know because that's when i think a lot of people start uncovering things that they're they seem to be kind of better at or like better than i, I want to be a at. cartoonist a ca cartoonist yeah yeah that actually i don't think you know that about me i, I don't yeah i wanted to be a cartoonist way way back in the day because i was obsessed with like ed ed and eddie powerpuff girls oh, dexter's yeah. lab 
Dexter's Lab. Johnny Bravo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, uh, Cat Dog. Uh Like, I was upset. Courage the Cowardly Dog. Okay, so you were really a Cartoon Network kid, not so much Nickelodeon, huh? No, not it, there was Rugrats. There hey, was like uh, Hey, oh, of course, Hey Arnold, Iconic, right? uh, yeah. like Rocket Power, of course. You know, and <laughs> yeah. then obviously like Toonami, you know, with Dragon Ball that Z. That was a moment. Yeah, I mean, Toonami just served up a lot of juicy shows, and like, I, it was like the transition for me was. And by the way, I'm still going to like museums during my entire childhood. Yeah, my entire adolescence, my entire teenage years, um, I still try to frequent a museum like once every couple of weeks, once every three weeks, because I just think it's important. It teaches you about taste and, you know, what's good, what's what's not good, what's publicly perceived as good. I right, guess, right. What's publicly perceived as bad, um, bad quotation marks. But um, wants to be a cartoonist. And then there was some point where I started becoming uh a musician and drumming and i started like drawing out schematics of like inventions Mm. starting off with like drumming accessories or like interesting or like drum kits and stuff like that and then that's when i was like well maybe i want to become an inventor Mm. you know and like i really started focusing on that and i developed this like little something um you know all these lines kind of like just like they interact some way yeah they Um, totally do and so like i was observing my mom um because she taught me how to observe people really well and uh i noticed that while she was cooking she was holding this book and like stirring the pot but the book either like kept on like you know turning the page on its own or you know, uh, she has, she has like predisposed to arthritis. So like the book would kind of like get too heavy and she would right. have to sit down and then it'd go back. And so I'm like, what about if there was an invention where you could like put like this device on your thumb and like hold open the two pages. And I made that device as a prototype. And then, um, it was in, I, this is the first time that I ever used like a 3d printer. I used it at my library and I printed it out and then how did um, you design it? I just designed it on paper. I cut out that piece of paper. I found cardboard and then I cut out that piece of cardboard. And then, uh, we had like a little, like, uh, uh, tiny, like, uh, a tiny, a tiny, like electric saw, mm-hmm. like a handheld saw. And then I found like a piece of like PVC or some type of like hard plastic. And I just like drilled that out. And then I gave it to my mom and she was like, this is so helpful, but now it hurts my thumb. I'm like, okay, time to iterate. Right. And so like I was prototyping from a very young age, Yeah, clearly, you know? And so I built a little like landing pad for her thumb, same process, went back to her. You always go back to your customers, went back to your, to my mom, always calls her customer. And then um, she was like, this is much better, but now it shouldn't be at a right angle it now needs to be depressed because that's how my thumb lays. And I was like, Mm. okay. And during that time, I like, uh, also like added a a little like concave. There you go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I made the the edges a little less sharp. So it wouldn't rip the pages because it was leaving a mark on the pages now. Yep. Yep. And, um, I made it, uh, white because when I spray painted it red, it's my favorite color. It was like, just totally ruined her book. And I actually never showed her that page. (laughs) Still don't know if she she knows about that, but um, yeah, uh, I basically landed a meeting with uh, linens and things, and I was able to uh, sell the idea. But um, yeah, I mean, like, how much how much negotiating power do you have, like, when you're a high schooler? Right, <laughs> you right. Know, like, okay, so you're in high school at this point. I'm at high school. This is. Yeah. Well, technically, it was the summer going from eighth grade to freshman year. Okay. Yeah. And so um, that was that was also the – so they took that idea and then, like, it's kind of like a sour story how it ended up because I saw, like, a six-pack of it later on in college. And so it was almost, like, three, four years later that I actually saw it. And I'm like, the fuck? 
<laughs> they totally ripped that. But you sold it to them, right? I sold the idea to them, but I what I, what I was saying about the negotiation stuff is like I should have just negotiated for royalties. Oh, totally. You know, totally. And so it was just like I think it was like three or four thousand bucks. Wow, pathetic, right? Sure, like, yeah. sure. But like you know, a notch under your belt nonetheless. And my mom, bless her heart, was so supportive that she was just like, "You need to take this meeting by yourself," you know. And so I don't, I, I don't regret that aspect, but. You know, looking back, I'm like, damn, like, you know, probably like a lot of cooks, like my mom, you know, use that. Oh, sure. And so, like, sure. but now Lens and Things is, you know, gone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're they're in the graveyard. Um, well, okay, so then that's like you're going into high school. You now like have done a lot of drawing, a little bit of like tinkering or like sort of like building stuff. Yeah. and drawing cartoon tinkering mm -hmm. and then now i'm getting exposed to like the marketing world because now i'm like well i need to present myself better mm. you know and so that led me to the marketing world and uh i started i noticed this place like right down the street called tracy lock and it always had like really cool branding on the outside whenever i'd pass by it and their headquarters is in Wilton. And so I'm like, it's literally actually right down the road from me. Wow. And um, so I went online and they had some open internship positions. I applied, I got the job or I got, I got a job interview. And then it was in the lobby of uh, Tracy Locke that um, a senior executive from Pepsi um, looked at some of my doodles and I guess it reminded him of like uh, the Sobe, the new Sobe rebrand that they were thinking of. And he's like, who did that? I'm like, I did that. He's like, why are you here? <laughs> you know, you're like yeah. such a young kid. And I'm like, well, I'm here to see, I'm here to see uh, X, X and X. And they're like, okay, like, here's my card. I want you to give me a call because I really like that. And he got up, he went to his meeting, yada, yada, yada. And I took my meeting and uh, got started working, started doing some tests for a project. Um, I think it was around like or Origina or something. Right. Um, and came back and I'm like, hey, by the way, like, um, how do I get, how do I get like paid? <laughs> and they're like, Oh, so sorry. Like you got to fill out this, like, you know, W form. And I'm like, oh, okay. A couple weeks goes by. I get a call from HR being like, Hey, can you like come in? Uh, I was like, yeah, sure. I'm going to Tracy Lock. They're like, Hey, so I don't know how this oversight happened, but we just found out that you're a high school sophomore and not a college sophomore oh wow okay that's and so, so funny. they had what they were she basically explained to me like this is super illegal <laughs> um so uh we need to let you go um but for your work here are five four hundred dollar visa gift cards okay there you go so hey. got got paid um and i'm like i'm like damn like that really sucks but it's a huge vote of confidence around that exact same time uh i reach out to or i, I got a response from uh, that Pepsi exec. Yeah. And this is a, this is crazy. Cause I'm just like, I'm like this kid. Right. Basically. And so he's like, I want you to come to this meeting. And I look at the address and it's at Tracy Locke. <laughs> <laughs> and so I go in to this meeting with the HR, uh, with, uh, the HR, like looking at me as I'm passing by the, the waiting room being like, what is this kid doing here again? <laughs> and then uh my boss from when i was at that internship was also in that meeting he's like harrison what are you doing i'm like oh like he invited me here and he starts laughing he's like seriously like what and then the that vp was like no no i i invited him here he has some doodles i really want to like you know show the creative team one thing led to another. I designed the, uh, I redesigned the, uh, the Sobe Life water bottle. Right, right, right. And so, okay, wow. um, or there was, a, there was a whole team, but I had an active, pr pretty, pretty active role in it. Um, and how, how did yeah. that work if you were still too young to 
Visa gift cards, baby. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So they, they got the Visa gift card yeah. shit working up again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so Visa gift cards, and then uh, dude, they also just gave me like uh, loads of merch. Yeah. You know, they like they masked, they masked right, it right. 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 Um, and uh, worked out a pretty good deal. Learned about royalties at that point. Good. Okay. Um, and so that was very helpful. And um, from there, I was like, you know, I really like this stuff uh in terms of like inventing but i also really miss my cartooning days but i'm mm. also really interested in marketing and mm. you know now like user psychology is kind of coming into the fold like how do i apply this like what major is there out there like it's also like not the kind of things that like someone in co uh, in high school is typically thinking about you know no, what I yeah mean? yeah it's also like something that's kind of interesting it's just like yeah very um that those aren't like the type of things, you know, they're thinking more about, I don't know, like, I want to be a doctor. Like, yeah. I want to be a lawyer. They think a lot more about like job jobs yeah. rather than like, yeah, how do you like market things more? Effectively? Yeah. You know, like fascinating. Okay. So at this point, you're now with the Sobe Life Water. That, when so was now that? The, yeah, that was like, um, that wrapped up like beginning of junior year. So now fast forward to like the end of junior year, I'm like, whoa, there's this pre-college program at RISD, my dad's alma mater, uh, just before he went to MIT. And I'm like, this would be really, really cool if I, you know, stepped into the world of design, but what major would I choose for like even the pre-college? Reached out to some people in uh, like, uh, in uh, admissions and they're like talking me through stuff. They're like, you could do graphic design maybe, but that wouldn't really include this. You can maybe do like this major over here. I'm like, oh, interesting. Like what about illustration? Illustration was just like their most fluid and open major. You can more or less do anything. Right. And um, that didn't really like do it for me by the end Why of- Why not? Because it just lacked the, the the user it was still art at the end of the day it wasn't mm. design and art is very subjective whereas design is objective it's built for others right whereas art is just purely for yourself right and um i missed that and i actually didn't understand the distinction between art and design until that summer whoa was that like a conversation that was explicitly happening uh that summer or like... it was just an internal conversation mm. um but I did, I think I, I brought it up with my, my professor at pre-college during that time. And, um, when it came back around to like actually apply, I reached out to Leanne Scotto, um, an off chance that you're listening to this, you had a very influential role in my life of like introducing me to this field of industrial design. And she was like, well, if you didn't enjoy illustration and uh you still like it and you really enjoy graphic design but it doesn't include this that and the other thing like maybe like furniture design but maybe industrial design i'm like what the heck is industrial design and my world like i'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. my world literally like opened up and that same year i got my first macbook Whoa. and that was also really really intense and it was because of john markey my best friend in high school uh and middle school but like he opens me up to the world of mac and every single time like so it was like leanne scotto telling me about industrial design maybe like a week later or something i got like this macbook yeah and i'm like holy shit this is what good design is. This is industrial design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I went down this like deep, deep rabbit hole of like industrial designers or like what it meant, Wikipedia articles. And um, I just remember being like absolutely consumed by it. And I'm like, this is definitely what I want to do, 100,000%. And yeah, went to RISD um, and started studying industrial design. Well, it's more or less like so then yeah. yeah talk about RISD like what you know I've heard about the first what one or two years is it a core curriculum or the first year you're foundation not a, year? Yeah, yeah foundation year it's when more or less they weed out like half the students and um, 
you like sleep in the studios. There's like no time to even go to the cafeteria and eat. I was living off of cinnamon pop tarts. I'm not even kidding. I was living off of cinnamon pop tarts for maybe like, yeah, the first year of RISD. And I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it. I was like, this is it's terrible because I like I'm I'm not like that into drawing anymore. I'm like using tr like oh, and that's another thing. It's like foundation year. It's all about drawing. It's all about drawing, and it's all about art history, and uh, it's all about it's foundation. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like and uh, also how to communicate your work, and you were judged on like all these criteria, and um, I really was just like honestly like a terrible student like a really really bad student because i was not into the assignments i was not into the curriculum at all and um i just really wanted to like start building stuff and um finally sophomore year rolls around i declare industrial design as my major and for the first like year year and three quarters i was really really into it i loved it um, but my mind was now starting to get consumed with, uh, the iPhone mm. and like, you know, the iPhone, when it came out in 2008, it really didn't take off. Blackberry was still the king, you know, everyone wanted like, you know, uh, it was also so limited in its functionality. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so like, there, just like, there wasn't really an app store yet. Yeah. The, I remember like the famous, like you couldn't actually, the copy functionality didn't work. So you couldn't like, yeah. there wasn't a clipboard to use, yeah. right? Oh yeah. And, um, I got, I got my first iPhone in, I got my first iPhone, maybe it was in high school, but like the more and more I used it, the more apps that came came across the like came into the app store over the years i'm like this is the future like these apps are no different of an experience than the ones i'm designing in the physical world like who designs these you know are industrial designers designing these or and like engineers are just programming them are engineers now becoming designers i was like very confused and i'm yeah, like yeah like how do i enter this world and so again like and all the while my mom and my dad are like you know they were either heavily considering it or like they they bought uh um an insurance policy like a dropout insurance policy oh okay so they yeah. would get like their tuition back why were they like, worried about you dropping out because I, I probably every other week i was home and i was saying like i really don't like this curriculum <laughs> you know <laughs> and like I'm like, maybe I should just drop out. Like I've done well, well for myself. But then know? what were some of the lessons that you learned? Like in, in that foundation year, you know, how to take critique. And I think that's, it's pro probably like the biggest takeaway, uh, at RISD was just learning about your own style, learning how to take constructive criticism. And sometimes it wasn't constructive. Sometimes it was just like, criticism and there's a lot of people that just like cried and like dropped out after a crit and i'm not trying to like say this to sensationalize it i'm just saying like RISD is the f the the funny acronym is reason i'm sleep deprived you know there and you so go. it's like you just you work like so intensely did you know that work ethic before you got there yeah and it's like, it's, it's riddle across like blogs and, you know, YouTube Oh, not videos. about their work ethic. Oh. I mean, did you have that in you? Already? Oh, I, like, were you already yeah. that kind of intense worker? Yeah, I was, I was a very, very intense worker and I would stay up uh, probably like even in high school, I would stay up to like, um, maybe like one thirty or two, just like working on a painting or yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. Know, inventing something so did you find did you find that foundation year and like the the work culture uh at RISD was it more sort of like um was it challenging because it was stretching you to your limits or did you feel actually like more it was like enabling what you know I thought it was a waste of time you thought it was a waste of time yeah it wasn't until like my uh a couple years after 
um, having had done it that I didn't, I like, I didn't see for a very long time the benefit of it. But looking back at it, it's very clear what the benefit was. And it's like how to take constructive criticism and not to take it as like a personal attack, but, uh, and also to look at um, all all aspects of your work, all shortcomings of your work as an opportunity to grow, you know? And so that was really, really formative. And also to build a, vo a design vocabulary, you know, mm. except for the use of the word juxtaposition, juxtaposition <laughs> because gosh, it's like this running joke at like every at, within designers, just like, don't use that word. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's like always gets overused. Um, I feel like every yeah. college, like wherever the sort of like the, you know, the, the school, if it gets known for something, it like probably has like a word or like a set yeah. of jargon that's just like, yeah, like did, George, did Georgetown? Yeah, I feel like the SFS had, um, the SFS had its own weird uh, shibboleths for sure. Like, uh, and the School of Foreign Service is almost like it's just like, it's just. It's almost like a distinctly owned school. It's a it's a college, yeah. Yeah. so they had like a university system, yeah. like the European style, where they had yeah. like standalone college, yeah. right? That had its own admissions process. Yeah. So you didn't apply to Georgetown; you applied to the School of Foreign Service, yeah. right? And uh, yeah, I mean, we had like uh, a lot of like inside jargon because we all had to read. Uh, like we had the our first year was yeah. kind of similarly intense, where yeah. we would do a um semester long like heavy duty class where like it was like additional it was like more than the three credits mm. of a typical class and way more than than the amount of credits of like course load that it was a survey of all of western political thought mm. uh, and it was called political and social thought and like so for and it was a thing where like the the professors would literally like in the philosophy department would each have a cohort of like uh, about like a hundred or hmm. hundred fifty like uh, school foreign service freshmen, so yeah. like like energetic, ambitious, like trying to leave, leave their mark on the world. And basically, it was like you're gonna come in here, and we're gonna start your journey of leaving that mark on the world. Yeah, by you becoming informed on like the foundations of our civilization's morality and yeah. how we think about right and wrong. And so like they would design a theme every year it was like a different syllabus mm -hmm. like from professor to professor and it was like for um the one that uh, i took it was a uh, it starts they always start with plato yeah so you read the republic and then they kind of and then they do aristotle always do aristotle and then for us what we did was plato aristotle Locke, and hobbes as like the sort mm -hmm. of like the, the british liberals and then um uh then i think we did like Nietzsche and whatever and that's where I also got like seriously introduced to like Nietzsche as a thinker and anyway as a result like yeah. a lot we, our, our inside jokes were not like your juxtaposition was like us like making a reference to like I don't know like Thrasymachus in the Republic I still yeah. like will make you know might makes right jokes of like he's sort of like the egghead or whatever anyway yeah I think that this is like a thing very similar to RISD there yeah. was like an intense work culture yeah. at Georgetown that was actually part of why like I transferred to Georgetown from uh from Tufts yeah because I wanted that yeah. intensity i was actually seeking it out yeah you know it felt more natural i don't know how to put it and i there's two parts actually there's two uh it, i also worked at um outdoor sports center for more or less like three years it was also like right down the road right so tracy lock right down the road outdoor sports center right down the road and then uh gregory clark this furniture uh this high-end furniture place also right down the road super high concentrated i have no idea and Maggie Moose, one of my internships, like also right down the road. So oh, yeah, it was yeah. crazy. Like, right. yeah. But Gregory Clark and Outdoor Sports Center also taught me really, really valuable lessons uh, in high school. Gregory Clark, also a RISD alum, really celebrated uh, design uh, uh, furniture, furniture maker. Um, I would just do a lot of their graphic design and, you know, they would host events. I would get to talk to like other designers, other artists that were like celebrated or in the MoMA. And, you know, I was also just like building up my vocabulary. I was building up like my taste level. I was building up like how to present myself. Um, and with Outdoor Sports Center, I love sports. I played sports like throughout my entire life. Um, and uh, I was able to, you know, um, sell people on 
the sport of kayaking, the sport of skiing, the sport of uh, mm. snowboarding. And so like, I realize I'm like, I've always, I, I think I've always been like entrepreneurial, Yeah. but like, uh, outdoor sports center really taught me like how to sell myself or like how yeah. to sell something, Yeah. you know, without actually selling it, you know? Um, well, and, would you, would you have people coming in that knew they wanted to do something or like, were you like convincing them to pick up kayaking as a hobby? So there was this guy, Mark, Mark Bowden, I think. I think it was Mark Bowden. He had worked there. Probably still does, honestly. He's worked there for like 30 years. And it's like, you are never to sell something. Hmm. You are never to sell something. You're always to ask questions and and ask. And then when they ask you what the next steps are, or like when they ask you um, how much is something, that's when you can kind of shift gears into closing the sale. But he's like, you are never to sell something you are just simply there to ask a lot of questions and to uh tell them about the sport inspire them through like stories that you've learned in your training about like maybe like the like the athletes in that sport oh, interesting. and so like he was he was phenomenal and actually i still use that strategy it's not even a strategy it's just like want to get to know someone or like to even today like i want to get to know a company i'm really really interested in like all the problems out there and all the the solutions that like founders are yeah. creating for those problems. And just, you know, if they need design help, like they know what we do, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. like they, they can ask. Uh, but outside of that, yeah, those, those two. Um, and then I was almost like a little bit of like a, a social, uh, like Mariah at, um, at RISD. Like Why? I, I did not fit in terribly well. I kind of felt the same way at Georgetown. Yeah. Funny, you know? Why? Uh, because actually I was like not as bureaucracy minded. I was a little bit more like creativity maybe motivated. And there, there wasn't really a lane of people who were trying to like build apps or yeah. do design stuff. Honestly, yeah. like it sounds like, I mean, you later told me when I met you that even at RISD, that was like, in 2014 oh that was not a thing that was not a thing and like like is that true also at the curriculum level or even among the students like they weren't really like hip yet to product design both wow both and that's crazy 2014 yeah and it's actually uh something that john Maida, um who i got to have like the privilege of ha getting getting to know quite well because we you know he had made this he was the figurehead for this movement of like STEM to steam. Yeah. Uh, like including the word art in, in like uh, STEM. And uh, we like co-launched the series at RISD. Yeah. Um, and then later uh, Sarah Pease, uh, uh, who goes by S, they were able to uh, take that program. And she was also the first designer at Figma, which is really cool. Um, but she was able to take that program and really like uh, explode it with, um, uh, her friend Emily Wolf, who's uh, like a lead product designer at Facebook now. Right. Okay. But um, John Maida had this like philosophy that he wanted to bring more like corporations in, not to like sell out the school, but to bring the school into the 21st century of like, hey, RISD is actually just like an undercover MBA program. Like a lot of it's like known that like a lot of RISD graduates they just end up in design leadership positions right they're not actually productionists and they Rizzi just has like this like unspoken rule or maybe it is a rule across the staff of like they don't ever teach you technical schools or technical skills you can learn that shit outside of class like you're paying tuition to learn how to think you know to design your thoughts to design a process to design how your solutions play into the world right um, right so his way of thinking during the moments that we got to hang out was quite influential um and, and but yeah. like so at the same time though like it even in 2014 like we're we're not talking about like that that long ago yeah right and at that point it was clear that design was going to be playing a huge role yeah. in the tech industry yeah um just 
even if you were to say only like Apple, yeah. right? Like Apple's impact through design, so significant. But at the school that is considered sort of the place where design is like happening, yeah. right? Even among the students where you could imagine like professors are not caught up yet. I was like but... too, you know what it is? Is like designers and artists, they're too soft. <laughs> like, and I was not. I was like, I want to mass produce everything i want to uh like create businesses i want to you know I, like that also definitely helps the, to my pariah factor yeah, <laughs> georgetown is like, like yeah thinking about like business whoa yeah and okay. like money's when, getting involved yes and you want it to get involved yeah right? and yeah. it's like people did not take kindly to that yeah and like artists would even shepherd fairy or like seth mcfarlane or any one of the other notable, oh, like or Dale Trujillo, like I would hear conversations about how, in the student's eyes, those great those great artists and designers had sold out. But it's like also like how could how, they become yeah what they what yeah. they are like. Don't right. you want artists to be up on a pedestal? It's like, well, do you just consider selling out to be becoming famous? Yeah. You know, did they ask for that fame? Probably not. Probably people put that fame on them because they really like that work. Yeah. You yeah. know, Shepard Fairey certainly did not intend for Obey the Giant or the Obama poster to become as big as it did. People deemed that as worthy. Right. And so the public assigns fame, the public assigns influence. It's not the artist or the designer. So I took that, that lesson as like truth. Um, and I just didn't give a shit like what, what my peers thought of me at that point. And naturally, once I started to really believe in myself, I started to find other like-minded people who I'm now best friends with today. Uh, or were those people at RISD? Yeah. Carlos, Carlos and, uh, Xander both very. So what is it? Yeah. What, yeah. What is it that friend group kind of had in common that like, I find that really interesting is like, there are dreamers. We're all dreamers. dreamers. Yeah. We okay. all like 90% of the conversations, uh, you know, they now are starting off with what if, yeah, you know, like those conversations are happening more and more now. And I have found like a group of people that don't shut me out when I'm thinking big yeah. there, they add to it. Yeah. Totally. You know, they're, it's like a bunch of ands. Um, and that was really, really helpful. Um, and that really carried me into not dropping out. And um, during this time, I was really, really getting like fed up with a lot of products now that I was beginning to develop like my own opinions yeah. based in like good design principles. I was really beginning to get fed up with products and services I was using on my iPhone or like on my Mac. And I'm like, the hardware is beautiful. Why can't the software be just, just the same? Right. And so I started writing into companies like a madman, like in all my off hours, I would just like write in because I was selfishly hoping that they would take my constructive criticism and apply it so that I would have a better experience. Right. Like that was the selfish mo motivation, right, right, right. but you know, probably like 70% of them just did ignore probably even more, probably like 70, like, yeah, a bunch of them ignored my, my, uh, emails. Um, some reached back out. Some were like, Hey, like let's hop on a call. And these are like pretty senior people right. at these companies. Um, and one of the companies that, um, I gave feedback to, um, they didn't ever reply back, but it was my favorite service and it's imager. And, um, so I was just like, how do I get their attention? And so I just redesigned the app and, uh, I posted it up on imager itself. It became the top voted image for like, I think like, you, like a while. Um, and, uh, a week later, uh, Alan, the CEO reaches out to me. He's like, Hey, like, uh, would you be down for an interview for being our product designer? I'm like, this cannot be happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You like, you told me once that you were like, you didn't believe that it was actually him calling the first time. I, I didn't right? believe. And like, like hung I up, hung right? up yeah. and I hung up and I'm like, that's mean. <laughs> 
you know, like someone at RISD must have, and I also had like a bully at RISD and like, that was annoying to think about. Like yeah. that was maybe a bu the bully, like um, giving me a hard time Yeah, because I was also the poster child of, R of RISD. So like my photo was literally everywhere on all the brochures and like billboards and like posters and stuff. And so like steam it up with Harrison. <laughs> it's like, well, it, my face was used to ask for money because I was the recipient of like a bunch of these scholarships. Yeah. 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 And so, um, I thought it was just my bully and Alan's like, uh, this is actually Alan. Uh, like, do you have time to like Skype? I'm like, yeah, sure. So I Skyped with him and Bryn, who's like this fantastic engineer and hopped on a call. They really liked me. I really like them. And they're like, um, we'd love to like move you out. Um, when can you start? I said the day after graduation and I left graduation early and I, said fuck all and like literally the the next day i was at the imager office at mission in san francisco I'm like yeah i'm getting goosebumps thinking about it like but like seconds after your tassel dropped dude i just loved it and it was just like finally i'm in a place in san francisco that i've read about yeah. that like lore is actively being created around oh, it was yeah. the era of move fast break things back when it it didn't have the capacity to be malicious yeah it was just pushing the boundaries of what the digital world could do and i think i think that that's yeah. a good stopping point yeah so that we can talk more yeah. about san francisco next time yeah well cool. amazing well thanks for having me oh thanks for coming <laughs> on <laughs> that's it guys uh we will see you next time see bye you. bye